Doom. If you're at all familiar with my channel, then you know I talk about this game quite a bit. Doom had me aching for a PC like nothing else in 1993. If you were a console gamer then, the thought of playing Doom or even Wolfenstein 3D on Genesis or Super Nintendo was beyond comprehension. The Super Nintendo would receive ports of both games eventually, though Genesis fans, like myself, had to make do with zero tolerance. Yes, we had Doom on 32X, but you needed a separate piece of hardware in order to play it. If you wanted frenetic, bloody, first-person action on Genesis, Zero Tolerance was your one and only option. Well, in North America, at least. I'll touch on that later. Zero Tolerance is set in the distant future where the Planet Defense Corps flagship is invaded by an alien force, so they call for the Zero Tolerance strike team to save the day. The story is cliché, and it doesn't really matter anyway. While it does make reference to a nuclear cooling system that will blow in a matter of hours, there's no time limit. It's just a bit of drama added for mood. After a bit of text, you select one of five available squad members. Whenever you die, you select another teammate, and you carry on. The manual claims each member has their own set of starting equipment and unique abilities. The former's true enough, though I debate the latter. I haven't clocked as many hours with zero tolerance as I have with, say, Resident Evil, but I've never seen these unique abilities in action. Not that I'm aware of. Anyway, gameplay is what you'd expect. You gun down hordes of enemies while collecting weapons, ammo, power-ups, and other helpful items. No keys or puzzles to solve, just violence and bloodshed. Your sole objective is to clear the level and move on to the next. You keep track of how many soldiers and crabs you have left with the counter on your left. The counter on the right is your health. Then you have the radar and your driver's license for whatever fuck reason. What's the point? I understand wanting to see your character. Hell, we always saw Blaskowitz and, uh, him. We didn't see their date of birth, height, weight, or gender. It just takes up space. Uh, uh, okay, before bitch mode activates, let me just say that Zero Tolerance is not a bad game. It's far from unplayable. There are some things I like. For example, I do enjoy creeping up and down these halls blasting infected soldiers, or storming large spaces while laying waste to every motherfucker in the room. There's great satisfaction in slaughter for a few reasons. The graphics help, we have varied textures throughout, multi-sided enemy sprites, and blood. May not compare to Duke Nukem 3D, though it's still cool. Most of the sound effects are awesome. The pistol and shotgun are well-defined and loud as fuck. Next up, the control. Zero Tolerance doesn't utilize the six-button arcade pad, and that's fine. There aren't many button combinations, and response time is good. Mobility's a little sluggish, but not horrible. Levels are large and maze-like, which is consistent with the genre, and to think, there's 40 levels to explore. That's mighty impressive considering there's no added hardware, no SVP chip or anything like that, just pure Genesis. Want to hear something really impressive though? It's multiplayer. Players could send away for a free link cable that would connect the second controller port to another Genesis for two-player action. The only problem is that you needed two copies of the game, two consoles, and two televisions. I don't think many kids attempted this in 1994. Nowadays, link cables are rarely seen, but there's a tutorial on Sega 16 that shows how to make your own using two Genesis cables and electrical tape. Wow! As far as I know, Zero Tolerance is the only game that used this cable, and the multiplayer was cooperative only. You can hurt one another, but it lacks a proper deathmatch setting. In spite of all this neat shit, I do have some complaints. First, the music. It's not bad, though it tends to bleed into the background. Have you ever heard an unfinished demo for a song where all you hear is a drum loop and some bass? Yeah, that's the soundtrack in a nutshell. Also, this fucking voice. Handgun collected. Shotgun collected. Shotgun collected. 
Each and every time I pick something up, this bitch has to tell me about it as if I'm fucking blind. Like, I get it. I picked up some ammo. Will you shut the hell up already? It gets old fast. You know what else gets old? The gameplay. As I mentioned, there's no puzzles or fetch quests to break up the action here. It's pure mayhem, and that grows tiresome after five levels. Then again, it wouldn't be so bad if I weren't squinting so damn much. As much as players piss and moan about Doom and its border, this takes the cake. It may not look bad here, but imagine a 20-inch display. Then imagine you're sitting two or three feet away from it. Try looking at this itty-bitty rectangle then. It gives me a headache. Battle Frenzy came out that same year, and it's nowhere near as obtrusive. Don't worry, I'm getting to that. Ultimately, Zero Tolerance is an okay game. I feel it may have been a little too ambitious for the hardware at the time. If it were made today for the same console, I have no doubt Zero Tolerance would look and play just as well as Wolfenstein 3D. This is no match for Doom, but it's not a complete waste either. If you really love first-person shooters, this may be worth a try. Why the hell not? It's cheaper than I am. 